Just one step, one, one more step. Yes, I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to Well, uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this uh, uh, press conference. Uh, you have a statement from Azimio uh, uh, Moja, One Kenya. She's going to be read to you by Honorable Munya. Karibu. Yes, good afternoon. I'll read the statement. Our start on talks to resolve crisis. Yesterday, Kenya Kwanzaa released a one-sided statement signed by Honorable Kimani Chungwa that they claimed to incorporate our views. We disowned the statement by Honorable Chungwa as Mio had nothing to do with it. Its contents were those of Kenya Kwanzaa their wish list. We wish to clarify as follows. One, we remain committed to dialogue and a peaceful resolution of the social, economic, and political problems the country is currently witnessing and that threaten the lives of millions of our citizens. Two, in that spirit, we sanctioned a meeting between our leadership and that of Kenya Kwanzaa, under the facilitation of His Excellency Olusegun Obasanjo. Four, three, this initial meeting was to prepare and ground for honest discussions of the issues we have been raising and those that Kenya Kwanzaa feels like racing. The meeting was therefore a talk about envisioned talks. For we take this highly opportunity to thank His Excellency Obasanjo for offering himself as a senior son of Africa and a global diplomat to oversee a peaceful resolution to the crisis here in our country. Five, we take note that Kenya Kwanzaa is trying to deny His Excellency Obasanjo's presence and leadership of the talks. That would be a very unfortunate that would be a very unfortunate development indeed. It points to Kenya Kwanzaa now institutionalizing the culture of deceit and taking it to the global stage. 
they denied the presence of President Sulhu here a few weeks ago, and now they want to deny the presence of His Excellency Obasanjo. But six, while we remain committed to dialogue with Kenya Kwanzaa for a speedy and sustainable resolution to the country's problems, our issues have not changed. Our priority for discussion is the escalating cost of living, which has only got worse with the lifting of the conservatory Honda on the 2023 Finance Act last week. We want to see actions by the regime that will lead to the immediate lowering of cost of living. It is our position that this issue does not require any discussion, but policy or action by the Kenya Kwanzaa government. But since they don't, since they won't do it, lowering the cost of living has to be part of the talks. Negotiations must therefore include the repeal of the oppressive, cruel, and insensitive Finance Act 2023. Under Article 43, it is the responsibility of the state to guarantee access to basic needs such as food, education, water, health, etc. Nine, negotiations must include the issue of inclusivity. Kenya Kwanzaa must be made to disown and disavow the illegal, unconstitutional, and divisive efforts to turn Kenya into a private company that hires only those who voted for Kenya Kwanzaa. We remind Kenya Kwanzaa that the declaration by Regadi Gachagua that Kenya is a private company which has never been disowned by Mr. William Ruto isolates, marginalizes, and treats several communities and regions in Kenya as second-class citizens. It has revived the question of a credible solution of the right to self-determination. Ten. Audit of 2022 elections and the bipartisan reconstitution of IEBC and respect for the autonomy and independence of political parties must be part of the talks. 11. In light of what has transpired these past days, we will bring to the table the issue of accountability and responsibility for the brutality and abuse of human rights of protesters. Twelve, it is our position that no party to these negotiations can and should determine for the other party what to raise and what not to raise. We will respect Kenya Kwanzaa's right to bring all its issues to the table, and they must also respect ours. Number 13, likewise, we expect Kenya Kwanzaa to have no objections to our priorities. 14, until we agree that each party has the freedom and right to bring its issues to the table, and, we, and as we continue to pursue discussion, we shall continue with our engagements with the people. That right is in our constitution. If there is no basis for any discussion, we will continue exercising our constitutional rights of association, of expression, of assembly. We are not going to negotiate that with anyone. In the meantime, number 15, we appeal to the Kenyans to continue extending support to families of the victims of police brutality. The response has been encouraging. 16. 
in addition to the account number previously given, people can channel contributions through pay bill number 880100. Account number 4488460011 for Kenya shillings and double four double eight forty six double zero twenty seven for US dollars. Account name Citizens Emergency Fund. Thank you very much. Okay, my, my name is Emmanuel Tov from KTN News. Two questions. Have, uh, has the Azimio team met President William Ruto? Because he has hinted on that. And number two, have you come up with the membership of the five members of the ten-member team that is supposed to lead the discussions? And lastly, what, now, what happens to the bipartisan team of the 14 members now that we have another team in place? Yes, it, it, it's apparent from our statement that indeed there was a meeting uh, chaired by His Excellency Honorable Obasanjo. And uh, Baba accepted to appear in that meeting because of his respect for His Excellency Honorable Obasanjo. And as we have pointed out very clearly in our statement, that meeting did not conclude on any issues. It was a meeting to agree on when to hold talks and how to hold the talks. So there were no issues conversed there and agreed. So it is totally unacceptable and misleading to the public for Kenya Kwanza to start releasing its own statements purporting to be uh, Asimio Laumoja issues. We have made it clear what our issues are here, and once a discussion is made within Asimio, and our team is picked, then those are the issues that will be tabled for discussion in that committee. The, the we are still discussing, and we will soon announce the names of those members. Well, well, remember we we already announced that we are disbanded that team, not because we were not ready for the talks, but because there was no good faith from the other side. So we moved to another level. These things are always developing and evolving as the situation also evolves. All right. Um, I'm Sidney Chazima from NTV. Um, I've, I've looked at the list from Kenya, from Kenya Kwanza, and it appears they are reading from President William Ruto's memoranda that was sent to um, Moses Wetangula. There's something they're talking about, creating uh, the, office of the op office of the leader of opposition. So in terms of oversight, how strong is this oversight office when it's getting the money from the exchequer? We have made it very clear. Those are their issues. Those are their issues. So you can ask them what they want to do with those issues. We have raised ours today. Their issues are their issues. Thank you very much. Um, Peter Munya, uh, one final question, Honorable. Um, this is uh, Abdikadir from Citizen. You have disowned the uh, Kenya Kwanzaa statement, which largely outlines what they want addressed in the talks. And clearly then it's from, from the onset, it seems like the talks are already freezed before they even start. Then what's the point? And all of you are members of the country's political establishment, so are members of the other part. Then what's the point of even hinting at talks when you clearly have well-documented differences and there are Kenyans who are looking at you with bated breath over where the country is, deep systemic corruption, patronage and failure by state officials to address what their problems are. And you, the politicians, taking the Kenyan people as a punching bag? First of all, talks 
are only talks because there are disagreements. Otherwise, if you don't have any disagreements, what would you be talking about? So clearly, there are fundamental disagreements that need to be ironed out between us and Kenya Kwanzaa. And the difference between our issues and theirs is the issues of affecting the people and especially the issue of the cost of living that is escalating every day is the bottom line. That is the starting point. If there is no discussion on the issue of the cost of living and the bungling of elections by IBC, I don't see or we don't see as a team what other issues we can discuss. And one final so question. that is where we start, the point of departure is oh, okay. cost of living. How do we collaborate? How do we work together okay. to lower the cost of living so that Kenyans can have hope no, and right. can start living better lives than they are living today? One final question. We were here in 2007. It took the intervention of Kofi Annan Delet and the international community to forestall a country that was on the abyss. I mean, here is Obasanjo again. Why do we need a foreign intervention or from another entity, yet we have provisions in one of the most elaborate constitutional frameworks to address our problems? Isn't this not, I mean, an egg on the face of the country's political establishment for lacking commitment to address political stability issue after every electoral cycle? Why do we need Obasanjo? Why? I think you, you, you understand the problem is a trust deficit that has been shown by the Kenya Kwanzaa government that when you discuss something the next day the, the, the goalpost keeps moving. So you require, you require a respected outsider who can be able to uh, uh, you know, uh, give some guarantee in terms of what was said and what was discussed because you can see some party that is like, wants to keep uh, you know, keep uh, Manipulating the process. We are so, and I don't think there is any problem with the, our constitution. Our constitution does not outlaw involvement of uh, uh, mediators in discussions. So I, I don't, I don't get where you are getting that idea that because we have a constitution that has been there for a long time, mediators are not required in a dialogue process where there is a fundamental disagreement between parties in a country. We are solving civil wars elsewhere. And we are not uh, a discussion, a meeting is not a civil war. Why not so, address so small issues like what you have raised? These issues are heavy. Where citizens' rights are being trampled on and, and, and the citizens are being killed, uh, brut brutalized by uh, police forces that we pay for, cannot be small issues. With a lot of respect to you. Thank you very much.